Now, beyond the war, diplomacy is also taking the hit. Diplomatic tensions are on the rise in West Asia with the ongoing war. Turkey has sharpened its attack against Israel. Israel has ordered its diplomatic staffers to return from Turkey immediately. Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen says that he wants to conduct a re-evaluation of the relations between Israel and Turkey. Now, Israel is furious with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Speaking at a pro-Palestinian rally attended by hundreds of thousands of people in Istanbul, Erdogan said that the Turkish people are ready to defend West Asia if Western countries try to wage a fight between Christianity and Islam. Netanyahu, nasıl teröristse, Hamas da teröristmiş. Yazıklar olsun. İsrail, biz de seni savaş suçlusu olarak dünyaya ilan edeceğiz. Ve şimdi bunun hazırlığı içindeyiz. Ya İsrail sen buralara nasıl geldin? Nasıl girdin? Sen bir işgalcisin. Sen bir örgütsün. Dolayısıyla Türk milleti bunu biliyor. Şair ne diyor? Batı'dan bahsediyorum. Gazze'deki katliamında en büyük sorumlusu işte bu batıdır. Kur ve kararlılık öyle bir hastettir ki tamamını birliğin rahmetinde buluşmaya ayrılığın azabından uz Ey batı size sesleniyorum. Siz yeniden bir hilal haçlı mücadelesi mi estirmek istiyorsunuz? Eğer böyle bir gayretin içerisindeyseniz biliniz ki bu millet ölmedi. Bu millet dimdik ayakta ve yine aynı şekilde aynı kararlılıkla Libya'da neysek Karabağ'da neysek bilesiniz ki Orta Doğu'da da oyuz. Now, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, responded in his late night remarks, although without naming Erdogan. He said, do not accuse us of war crimes. If you think that you can accuse our soldiers of war crimes, then that is hypocrisy. We are the most moral army in the world. The latest comments by Erdogan hold the potential to cause serious damage between israel Turkey ties. Before the conflict, Israel always tried to build strong ties with non-Arab countries in and around West Asia. Reports suggest that a better Israeli ties with Turkey will put pressure on Hamas, as the group has managed to establish a presence in Istanbul and run operation from there since the last decade. Turkey, on the other hand, sees security ties with Israel as a chance to get closer to the United States. During the late 1990s, strong Israel-Turkey security ties found a lot of support in Washington. This includes Jewish American communities and pro-Israel groups. Reports claim that Turkish authorities believe pro-Israeli groups can help Turkey regarding the sale of F-16 fighter jets. The other crucial factor, of course, is natural gas, which Israel discovered off its coast back in 2010. Israel aims to sell the gas to Europe, and the most economical, viable way is to get that gas through Turkey. Both the countries stand in the line to benefit from it if it happens. Now, during two decades in power, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has repeatedly taken a stand in favor of the Palestinians. Last year, in a maiden move, he also moved to restore diplomatic relations with Israel, meeting in September with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But on Wednesday, he cancelled plans to visit Israel, citing its inhumane war against Hamas militants in Gaza, whom he described not as terrorists, but as liberators fighting for their land.
Rusya Federasyonu Devlet Başkanı Dostum Putin'in bu insani Now to decode this diplomatic rift further, we are being joined by Scott Lucas from the United Kingdom. He is a professor of international politics at Clinton Institute, University College in Dublin. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for having me here. Now, Scott, since the war started, Turkey has not minced its words against Israel. It has called Benjamin Netanyahu a terrorist, referred to the attack on Gaza as madness, it has even branded Israel as an occupier. Do you think the divide has only erupted because of this war or do the lines go deeper? Well, actually, in the first days after the Hamas attack into Israel on October 7th, which killed more than 1,400 people, including more than 1,000 civilians, uh, President Erdogan was taking much more of a middle position right. on this conflict. He was actually talking about Turkey being a mediator to try to bring down, to break the cycle of violence. Now, what has happened, as you've highlighted in your excellent package in the last few days, is that Pre President Erdogan has shifted both his short-term position and the broader position. The broader position, again, as you mentioned, is that Erdogan, while always looking to be the leader of the Muslim world, uh, while always backing the Palestinian people, was trying to build relations with Israel. Part of that was because of the energy factor. Part of it was a strategic decision. Uh, in the last 72 hours, it's safe to say that Erdogan has thrown that out the window, that the idea of Turkey and Israel in the short term having very positive relations is gone. Now, in part, that is because of widespread public anger in Turkey, as well as elsewhere, at the mass killing of civilians in Gaza, by the Israeli response to Hamas, something which is likely to expand in the days to come if there is a ground offensive. Uh, but it is also Erdogan's calculation. Uh, if you give me a minute to explain, there's two factors here. The first is, as I mentioned, is whenever Erdogan needs public support, he will play at the idea that he is not only the leader of Turkey, but he is the leader of the Islamic world, that he is the one who can talk to Arab countries. He could deal with the situation between Armenia and Azerbaijan right. over nagorno karabakh but the second factor is, is that position of being the leader of the Turkish people is threatened by the economy. Since Erdogan was reelected in May, the Turkish currency has sunk another third. It is down by about 75% in the last couple of years. Inflation is at 62% and rising. Interest rates were just raised two days ago to 35%. The Turkish economy is in serious trouble and Erdogan doesn't want to be blamed for it. Right. So what do you do? You give the people something else to talk about, which is to make this sharp turn, not only to criticize the Israeli operations, that you can expect, not only to call Benjamin Netanyahu a terrorist, but the thing that really irked Israel was when he said that Hamas is a liberation movement. You know, only what, right, more than just over two, three weeks. Scott, yeah. you've, you've actually mentioned Politics 101. It's interesting how you mention uh, Turkey's own domestic issues, which kind of leads to where Erdogan is going. But I want to go uh, to a point you uh, made earlier. You're right to point out that Erdogan did pose, itself, pose himself as a mediator, at least in the uh, first few days of the war. But with these uh, back and forth of these kind of comments between Erdogan and Netanyahu, do you think that mediator's role is completely off the table or where does this leave Turkey in this entire war? It's off the table in the short term because if Israel continues to pursue what is already now a limited ground offensive and it may expand in days to come, if Israel continues with the widespread bombing and if there's no humanitarian aid in Gaza, there's no space to be a mediator. And Erdogan will exploit that because, again, Erdogan, whenever he is in political trouble, picks an enemy. At one point, it was the Netherlands. At one point, it was Germany. Recently, it's been Sweden and Finland. Now it's Israel. If, and it is a huge if, if international pressure on Israel gets them to pull back on the attacks that are killing Gaza civilians, if there is some type of space to break the cycle of violence, then Turkey could come back into frame as a mediator because of the simple fact that, of course, Hamas leaders are based there as well as in Qatar. But I don't think Erdogan will lead that process. I think you'll be looking at other countries, the U.S., European countries, and especially a country like Saudi Arabia to try to create that space uh, 
and, and hope that Israel backs away a bit to allow us to get to talks rather than an increase in violence. All right, Scott, very briefly, do you think this war has the potential to become a regional conflict? Oh, yeah, I mean, it definitely has the potential to be a regional conflict because, you know, you're talking like actors like Hezbollah to the north of Israel. You're talking about the Houthis in Yemen, uh, who are all backed by Yemen, uh, who are all backed by Iran. However, at this point, and I stress at this point, while Iran is willing to attack U.S. personnel on American bases, those specific operations, the Iranian leadership doesn't want to see a war across the region because it could get them in a quite a deal of serious trouble, not only from the fact they could be attacked militarily, but because the Iranian economy is in a crisis point as well. All right, Scott, thank you so much for decoding all of those fine prints here. And thank you for speaking to us. Thank you and thank your listeners.